Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be going over CS50 Lab 2 Scrabble. And this is going to be a step-by-step -step walkthrough for beginners. So let's just jump straight into it. So I have this tab open here, and this is CS50's explanation on how to do Scrabble. Okay, so let's just follow the instructions step-by-step. -step. So first it says to type CD, and this is just my VS code here, empty. CD, okay. And then it tells us to copy this. Okay, I'm just going to do exactly what they say. And then it says to unzip, okay. It's gonna copy and paste what they tell me to do. And RM, and then type Y, okay. And then type Y, enter, okay. Finally, they say to do CD Scrabble, okay. Again, I'm just copying and pasting step by step what they tell me to do. And finally, they say, okay, type LS. LS, okay, and scrabble.c shows up, so that's a good sign. And then we do code scrabble.c. Okay, and now lots of distribution code comes up. Um, so this is the code that they give us with, when we just follow the instructions on their page. So this is distribution code or code that CS50 gives to us. Okay, um, but before we jump into that, let's first, uh, let's first understand what Scrabble is actually about, what the program is. So here's how it works. Every letter is given a score. So letter A is worth one point, B is worth three points, C is worth three points, and so on and so forth. So how it works is, both players, player one and player two, will input a word. And the player whose word scores more points wins the game. Okay, so let me just give a quick example here. So let's say player one puts in the word bad. So here bad, B is worth three points, A is worth one point, and D is worth two points. That gives player one a total of six points. Player two puts in the word deaf. So D is worth two points, E is worth one point, A is worth one point, and F is worth four points. So the total score is eight points. So here we can see player two has more points than player one. So the computer should print out player two wins. Okay, so this is a very basic explanation. And that's what we have so far. That's what we have to do. Now let's take a look at the distribution code that they give us. So first things first, we see here an array called points, which has ints, okay? And here we can see that this is the points assigned to each letter of the alphabet, okay? So here in the zeroth index, points zero is one, which means that A is worth one point. And in points one, the first index is three, which means B is worth three points. So these are the points assigned to each letter. So A is one, B is three, C is three, and so on and so forth, right? As we said earlier in this doc. Okay, so this is the array that they give us. And next up, we have a prototype here, a function called compute score that takes in a string called word and outputs an integer, okay? And so far this makes sense because the player is gonna give us a word, so that's the input, and it's gonna output an int which is the score, right? Okay, so let's go and, uh, I'm just going through the code step by step, by the way. Uh, we don't have to write this code. This is the code already given to us. So next thing you do is get input from both players, okay? And how we do that is using the get string function, if you remember from earlier problem sets. So string word one equals to get string, getting some input from the user. And the same thing for word two. So we're getting two inputs, one from player one and one from player two. And that's where they type in the word. And next thing we have to do is score both words, right? So int score one equals compute score word one. And this is the uh, prototype we saw earlier, right? So we have to write this function. So they don't tell us how to compute the score. We have to write the program that computes the score, right? And finally, we have to print the winner, okay? So first thing we have to do here is let's actually write the function. So how do we go about that? When the player inputs a word, we need a specific score to be given to that word, right? So let's take a look here. We should remember that every string is just an array of characters, right? If you remember from the lecture, every string is just an array of characters. So let's take an example here, the word code. So code is a string, right? The word code is a string, but it's actually just an array of characters. So let's just say um, this is an array called word. And in the zeroth index will be the letter C. 
and the first index will be the letter O, and the second index will be the letter D, and then the third index will be the letter E, which makes up the word code, right? So every character has its own index here. So every character is an index in the array, and every string is just an array of characters, as we can see here. Okay, so how do we go about calculating the score then of each word? Well, it would make sense that we loop through every character in the word, every, every index in the array, to find out the score of each letter, right? So we go through them one by one again and again until the end of the word. So it sounds like we need to use some sort of loop to do this, to go over each character one by one. And let's go ahead and do that. So let's code here. And here we know we can use a for loop. So for, let's just set an index, let's call it zero. I, let's initialize it to zero, i equals to zero. Int i equals to zero. And we need to keep on going along the length of the word. And if you remember, there is actually a function that's, that lets us do this, strlen, right? So let's use this function, which is under string.h, which tells us the length of the string, okay? So if you remember how a for loop is, is arranged, it's first, you initialize it to something, right? And then we give it a condition, keep on going as long as so we want to keep on going as long as i is less than the length of the string called word, right? So i is less than sterling of word. So keep on going, keep on going as long as i is less than the string length of word. And we want to keep on going one by one. So we do i plus plus. So what it says here is int i equals to zero. We initialize it to zero. Keep on going as long as there's still letters in that word. And we want to go one by one, so I++. plus plus. So it's uh, initialize, condition, and then the increment. Okay? So for this, what we want to do, we want to compute the score, right? So first things first, we know we need to have a variable called score to keep track of the score. So let's have an integer, of course. Score can either be 0, 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. It's not going to be a decimal, right? So let's do int score. And let's initialize it to zero. So it starts with zero, right? So here, when someone types a letter in the computer, what happens? So actually, if you remember from the lecture, every letter has its own position on the ASCII table, right? So we can see here that capital A is 65, capital B is 66, C is 67, and so on and so forth. And this is according to the ASCII table, which the computer uses. But uh, now we can see that actually, capital A, uppercase A, is in the 65th position according to ASCII, but lowercase A is in the 97th position. So uppercase and lowercase A have different positions in the ASCII table. But when we compare it to the uh, array here, the points array, it doesn't matter whether it's capital or lowercase, points, uh, A still needs to be in the zeroth index of points, right? And B, whether it's uppercase or lowercase, doesn't matter in Scrabble, we still need it to be in the first index of points, right? So A needs to be in the zeroth index, and B needs to be in the first index, and so on and so forth. But according to ASCII, uh, it's different, right? A is 65, and uh, uppercase A is 65 and lowercase A is 97. So already immediately, just like that, we know that we need to treat uppercase and lowercase letters differently, right? So how do we go about doing this? We need to convert it from ASCII, from its position in ASCII, to its position in the points array, okay? I hope everything makes sense so far because the computer, when we type a letter, understands ASCII. But here we need to make it equal to the we need to make it equal to the position in the points array. So how do we go about doing this? Hmm. Well, we know that uppercase A, its position in ASCII is 65, its position in points is zero, right? You can see here A is in the zeroth index of points. B is 66 in ASCII, but in points it's in the first index. C 
67th in ASCII and 2nd in the points array. So the difference here is always 65, right? So it actually is just ASCII minus 65 is where it is in the points array. So in the 65th uh, position of ASCII is the same thing as the 0th index of the array points. Okay, so that makes sense. So let's try to let's try to uh, make a formula here for the score. So score equals what is it? We need to update it every time. So score plus now which uh, which position in the points array should it be? So points which array should it be here? It should be whatever the index is in ASCII, which is word right minus 65 okay and i hope that makes sense and i'll just explain it once again so um here what the index of points that it takes is whatever index it actually is from the word minus 65 because this is according to ascii the index of the word is according to ascii right so here uh right like we said it should be uh, in ASCII, it's 65, but in points, it's 0. So that's why we need to do whatever it is, whatever the index of the word is, minus 65. So index in ASCII, minus 65, will give us the index in the points array. Okay, I hope that makes sense so far. But here we can see that this 65 is actually only applicable for the uppercase letters, because for the lowercase letters, we need to treat them differently, right? So... How do we tell the computer that this only applies, this only applies if it's an uppercase letter? It sounds like we need to use a condition here, which is the if condition, right? So if, sorry, let's put that within the if condition here. So if something is true, then this. So if it's an uppercase letter, then we need to subtract 65. So how do we say it's an uppercase letter? Well, we see the position here. It's six uppercase letters in the ASCII are 65 to 90, right? Uppercase is 65 to 90. Okay, so we can simply say if the index of word is greater than 65 and, and how do, how do we say and? In, the, in the, this condition, it's double ampersands, okay? So if it's less than 65, sorry, if it's greater than 65 and it's less than 90, right? So this is the way you tell the computer that, hey, if it's between 65 and 90, then do this, which makes sense, right? Everything makes sense so far, hopefully. But now we need to treat lowercase letters separately again, because here it's 97. A is 97. Whereas in our points array, A is still zero, whether it's uppercase or lowercase, doesn't matter at all. So again, now we need to tell the computer if it's lowercase, then we need to do the same thing, but instead of subtracting 65, how much do you think we should subtract? Well, we should subtract, we should subtract 97, right? That makes sense. And here, here's how it works. So lowercase A in ASCII is 97, but in points it's zero. So the difference is 97. Same goes with B. B is 98 in ASCII, but in the points array, it's one. So the difference here is always gonna be 97. So for lowercase letters, we need to subtract 97. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So now we do if, sorry. If the index is greater than 97, and it's less than whatever capital Z is. Let's check real quick. Whatever lowercase z is. Uh, lowercase z is 1, 2, 2. Okay. So 1, 2, 2. Then, so if it's uh, greater than 97 and less than 1, 2, 2, which is basically saying if it's an uppercase letter, then we need to do score equals score. There's a way to update the score plus points. And the index it should take in the points array is whatever the index is in ASCII 
minus 97, right? Because lowercase a is 97. But here, it just, it feels a little bit complicated here. We're saying like greater than 65, less than 90. And this is completely correct so far. Logically, it's correct. But what if there was a simpler way to say if it was uppercase and if it was lowercase? Rather than checking the ASCII values and doing all that, well, it turns out there is a way to do that. And the way we do that is using this uh, function right here. So it's called is upper, and it's under the header ctype.h. And uh, you wouldn't know this unless you actually went through the entire CS50 manual. So don't worry at all. So, but it turns out there is a function called is upper, which checks whether or not the function is, uh, whether or not the letter is uppercase. So rather than doing this whole long uh, thing, rather than saying between 65 and 90, greater than 65, less than 90, doing all this, what we can simply do is replace it with the function is upper. If is upper, word. So it checks whether the index is uppercase or not, whether the character in that index is uppercase or not. And if it is, it'll execute this. So it's the, it's the exact same thing functionally, but just it's simpler, right? If we can use a function, why do we have to reinvent the wheel and do it all over again? So we can do the same thing here. If is lower for this one, that's the name of the function, word i, right? And if you do it the previous way, it's correct as well. If you do it this way, it's correct as well. Uh, this is just simpler, right? So we've done all this so far, but uh, actually we don't just want to return the score. Uh, we don't just want to print the score. We need, to, we need to calculate the score and then we need to print out the winner, right? So what we need to do here is return score, right? Um, okay. I hope everything's clear so far. If you don't understand anything, please rewind or if anything's unclear up to this point, please leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to answer every single comment, right? But hopefully everything's clear. Uh, here we've calculated the number of points, but we don't want to print the score here. We want to return the score and we want to print the winner instead. So here, it's very simple, right? So what we do is simply print F, sorry, we need conditions, right? So if score one is greater than score two, we need to print, what do we need to print? Player one wins, right? Player one wins. And these are according to the instructions on uh, CS50 themselves, right? So if player, if player one's word has more points, print player one wins. If player two has more points, print player two wins. And if player one and player two have the same number of points, print tie, okay? This is what they tell us to do. So this is the way to do it right in code, right? If score one is greater than score two, print player one wins. This, make lo this makes logical sense. Else, if score two is greater than score one, what do we do? What do we need to print here? Print player two wins. Player two wins, okay? And there's a third scenario here, right? If it's a tie. So else, print tie, right? And here we can write the condition if score two is equal to score one, uh, but we don't have to write it because if it's not this, if, it's, if one is not greater than two and two is not greater than one, it's understood that one is equal to two. So they have the same player one and player two have the same number of points. So we can write it, we can write here, else if um, score one is equal to score two, but we don't have to because it's understood logically, right? So everything here makes sense so far. And let's just go ahead and compile the program. See if we did anything wrong, make scrabble.c. Oh, sorry, make scrabble, not make scrabble, this is how you compile. Make scrabble, oh, one error generator here. Oh, okay. So in line 27, there is an error. And here the problem is, okay. So we can see here that the variable is defined as score two, whereas here I accidentally put a space. So that's not gonna count that as the, um, as the variable. So it needs to be exactly what, you do, what the variable is. You need to write it exactly. We can't accidentally put a space here, a space there. 
completely changes the meaning. And as you can see, it gave us an error there. So that was just a silly mistake on my part. So let's try to compile again, make Scrabble. Okay. Let's try dot slash Scrabble to run it. Okay. It asked me player one. And let's just go back to our earlier example here. Bad, right? Player one says bad. And player two says dev. Player two wins. Okay. Oh, one small thing here is that um, the prompt starts in the same line. So let's just make a new line here. We do that by doing backslash n. So every time we print something, we want it to always move to the new line after that. It's just, it's still correct. The code itself is correct. It's just that uh, for neatness sake, you know, for style sake. So let's see what they tell us to check here. What CS50 themselves want us to check, okay. So let's just check the word computer. Player one says the word computer in all caps. And remember, we've already accounted for the uppercase and lowercase over here. If is upper, then minus 65. Is if lower, then minus 97. So we've already accounted for that. So it shouldn't be a problem here that they tell us to check computer with all caps and science with all lowercase. So let's make Scrabble. So let's run it, dot slash Scrabble. Player one puts in the word computer and player two puts in the word science and player one wins. And as it should print, player one wins. Okay, everything's correct so far. Let's just go ahead and check. I'm just copying and pasting this code here to check whether or not it's correct. And this is um, from the from the original file itself, right? This is the link I'll put in the description. It's a it's CS50's official link to explain what Scrabble is. And I'm just gonna go ahead and check here. And while we're doing that, guys, always remember to check the manual. Oh, uh, wrong tab. Sorry. Uh, Oh, um, whoops. <laughs> um, right, so we use some functions here that are part of the manual, right? But they didn't explicitly explain it in the lecture. So um, in your free time, just like go over the function, right? It can save us a lot of time. Like we did the is upper. We had to do a whole bunch of things from ASCII and less than 97, greater than 122, all that stuff. It could have been saved if we simply knew about the function called is upper, right? So it's worth it to go through the whole thing, go through everything and kind of get a feel for all the functions and everything so that we can save time in the future. And we can see here it's done checking and everything's green, which means everything's good, right? Uh, everything's correct. And if you wanna maximize your points, you can also put in this code to check the style of your code, right? How good is your style? And okay, we have a few errors here. Okay, one, one small thing, which is I forgot to put the space here. Okay, let's run style once again. Just to make sure, okay, looks good. Everything's good. So please, 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 after you watch this video, don't, don't copy this step by step. Try doing it yourself, right? Everything here is explained logically for you, for you to understand. Please don't copy the solution, guys. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna be posting, whoops. I'm gonna be posting PSATs every single week. So make sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications on. So to be updated and never miss a video. Let's get through CS50 together, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye, David.